What up, YouTube? Big Lou, Big Louis Coach Review, back in with another review, and today we're here to do a little review on the H Stone Bane mod. That's right, I've had this Mechanical Tube mod for six months, roughly about five to six months I've had this Mechanical Tube mod, and I've waited and waited and waited for something to fuck up on this mod, okay? And I'm happy to say I have no problems, except a few minor issues that I had with the device from the get-go, but through time they even themselves out, and the cons no longer pretty much exist for me, but they're still kind of there slightly, okay? Now, the Bane mod that we're going to be talking about today is the Boba Fett Cerakoted Edition. Not this one. This one is the Venom. But it's this one we're going to be looking at mostly. This is what it looks like when it's brand new. Now this is the matching RDA that goes with this mod. But unfortunately, I didn't get it. And if you're interested in seeing the building deck of the Pentakill, you will notice that it is a three-post RDA. They also sell a two-post RDA quad coil um, setup design that you could upgrade your pentakill from a three post up to a two post design which is like a velocity style with gold plated posts normally uh, a copper or brass bane mod will run you roughly around 220 bucks the limited edition boba fett green the green boba fett or army fatigue type of color or or OD green. I, I guess it's like an OD green, but they are calling it the Boba Fett edition. Is the limited edition Boba Fett, which only 50 were made. I happen to have number 42 of 50. Okay. Uh, they also come in a black Cerakoted edition, which I think there's about 120 of those. And then there's the standard copper and the standard brass as well. Uh, I haven't seen an aluminum one. If they do come out with an aluminum one, I'm most likely going to purchase it because I think it would look dope as an aluminum one. Uh, I think that would look really cool in my eyes. Or maybe even a stainless steel. And if the stainless steel could be heat treated, pff, that would be fucking dope also. I'd love to have a stainless steel heat treated uh, Bane mod. That thing, that, that would be pretty cool looking. Although the stainless probably won't hit as hard as the aluminum, but... You know, whatever. So anyway, uh, when I started off the intro of this video, I was vaping on the Dragon Mod and Company or Dragon Mod and Co. Mechanical Tube Mod. Now, this is a copper mod. This hits like a motherfucker also. It's a heavy, big bastard. It's huge, but it's an 18650. But the mod we're going to be talking about today is the Bane Mod. This is just an incredible comp mod. The Bane is an all-day, everyday carry comp slash everyday all day usage not to say that you can't use this every day but you know this is a fucking beast now i've got the same build on here as i will have on my bane with a brand new battery so you get to see how well the bane is going to vape with a brand new battery and the same kind of build with the same wire same wraps same everything okay now when you pick up your bane mod it's going to come in a silver canister which has this cool little window on it it comes in this looks like a spalding tennis ball type of canister basically it's a like a tin or aluminum canister with a cap has a sticker that goes over the top and through the sides kind of like a seal that if it's broken you would know that the device was opened okay um if you remove the mechanical tube mod from the packaging inside there's a foam package and you can see in there is my authenticity card so if i go to take that out It has my certificate of authenticity, basically, which, in a sense, for this is what it is. It's it's just a card to tell you that since this is a hybrid mechanical tube mod, they're telling you on the card itself that you could only use an RDA with a protruding pin, okay? Uh, they don't want you to use uh, a tank device that doesn't have a protruding pin. They don't want you to use a RTA or an RBA 
that doesn't have the protruding pin. It has to have a protruding pin and it does have to protrude a good amount in order to make good contact with this hybrid mechanical tube mod. Now, I really, really like this. I mean, they, they consider this to be a competition mechanical tube mod and it can be. It, it, it doesn't get hot button. It doesn't get warm, the mechanical tube itself. Uh, this one is made of brass, but it is Cerakoted with a uh, a green Boba Fett uh, army fatigue or OD green, like an army OD green type of color to it, which I like, okay? I do like that color very, very much, all right? Now, when you get it, it's going to be wrapped in this plastic bag, so simply just open up the plastic bag and pull your mechanical tube mod out, and here it is. So what I'd like to do is I like to take this apart into pieces, go up close, show you the parts, show you the threads, show you everything up close and personal, all right? And then we'll go from there, and I'll give you my overall thought process on this mechanical tube mod. The switch assembly comes in four pieces, just for the parts, excluding the, the magnets, okay? So the magnets, we do already know we have a fat magnet, and we have a two-piece magnet put together here. So these two, these two magnets are part of the switch, but I just need to separate them for now. Okay. Now, the switch assembly itself, if we look at the switch that comes in pieces, it comes in these four pieces, which is a pretty simple way of doing things. Okay. We have our copper contact, which has a flathead screw type of design to it. It has just a flathead marking right there female threaded copper so you do have a female threaded copper uh it is a long threaded female copper so now the copper pin basically sits inside this delrin which is the battery height adjustment you can see the copper pin sits in this delrin battery height adjustment all this does really is just keeps the copper contact away from the negative portion of your battery but you can see the height of the Delrin versus the height of the copper contact. This is a brass washer that's placed underneath the Delrin of the battery height adjustment, which will rest directly on the negative portion or the body of the mechanical tube mod. You can see there's a black circle on there. That's basically where the Delrin of my... Uh, battery height adjustment has been sitting on this washer. The washer is sitting on the Delrin and fitting on the contact. From the caliper, the outer diameter of the Bane mod is at 28.1 millimeters, okay? And then what we have on the top 510 hybrid connection area, there's a deck with a ledge okay now the inner diameter of this area right here comes out to 24.5 millimeters if we look at the tube mod itself you'll see that there is a seam at the center of the tube mod and it's got this really nice hourglass shape to it. it's got these nice contours on the top and on the bottom basically and some people said, oh, kind of looks like a scoundrel, but not really, okay? They did um, incorporate, you know, a scoundrel top right here, which is basically kind of like a scoundrel style. But then on the bottom portion, it tapers in again, and then it tapers in again. So you have two separate tapers. You have one by the switch area, one in the center body, and then one up top like a scoundrel. Now... Is this exactly like a scoundrel? No. The design is kind of like borrowed from a scoundrel, basically. I mean, scoundrel wasn't the first one to have this type of uh, tapered effect on a mechanical tube mod. I'm sure there have been other mechanical tube mods throughout the course of time that have had this design. But what I like about this mostly is that it separates from the center. So if you go to unscrew this, it'll separate from the center now my biggest gripe about this device is the threading okay when you get this device the threading you're gonna have to break in and let me explain this okay
If you notice at the very edge of the threading, it's not smooth. It looks all a little bit choppy, okay? Looks just a little choppy, you know, grainy and choppy. Right at the top edges of the threads, you can see it's all very choppy. Now, am I being a little too nitpicky? No, because you could actually feel that choppiness. And when you first get this mod, you have to break in the threads, literally, to get rid of that choppiness. That's because they're dealing with super fine threads. I believe they should have put beefier threads on this tube mod instead of these fine threads. Because the fine threads have a little choppiness to them. Now mine I've broken in. So could they have done an easier process or a longer process of adjusting the tolerances of their tap and die when they were threading this? Of course they can. They could have either used a new tap and die to eliminate the brass shredding as it was cutting the brass. You know, maybe the tip on their uh, diamond carbide tip for threading is a little worn down or maybe it was dirty or maybe there wasn't enough oil on it. I don't know. But the threading was, I mean, it is very smooth. Right now it's smooth because my device, I've broken it in. But when you first initially get this tube mod, you'll notice the threading is a little rough. And that is something I have to point out. Um, you know, aside from my overall love for this device, the threading is something that does kind of bug me. Because, you know, the mod, this mod is 300 bucks. This is the Bane um, Boba Fett Cerakoted Edition. This one is $300. And, you know, if you're spending your own hard-earned money on a device, you're going you're gonna to be a little pissed that the threads are kind of rough. You know, you want, the, you want to have perfect threads if it's a $300 device. That's just my honest opinion. Now, if we look up close, you can see the Cerakoting. Lots of scratches in the Cerakoting. But... To be perfectly honest with you, I abused the living hell out of this mod. Probably more than the average person ever would, really. So I've dropped it on concrete, I've dropped it on tile and marble floors, um, I've had it rubbing against batteries and RDAs in a bag, and you know I've had it in my pocket with screwdrivers and so forth, so there's a lot of scratches that this thing took. But if we look at this part right here, if you look at this scratch right here, you can see how thick of a coating of the Sarah coating is, okay? That's pretty thick, you know, more than your average tube mod out there. In the bottom portion of the tube mod, you'll see in the switch area, this would be known as the switch area, there are eight holes for venting. They have eight holes for battery venting, which are big beefy holes and the way to go around the switch is what they did was on the switch they provided grooves within a switch itself so there's a switch button there are grooves there that will meet up with that venting so you have all this venting around your switch now my switch it says this is the bane mod by h stone made in italy and down at the bottom, it says BF for the Boba Fett limited edition number 42 of 50. So the one I've got is based on a limited edition, which is running at 300 bucks. There's only 50 made of the Boba Fett green. They also have it in a Darth Vader uh, black Cerakote as well. But this is the Boba Fett edition, which is the limited edition, which is also the number 42 of 50. The inner diameter of the tube mod itself is coming in at 19 millimeters. Okay, so if you put an 18650 in there, you can see that is the amount of space that you have. You have one millimeter of space in there. Now let's put our switch back together. Real simple, you just take our beefy fat magnet stick it in the bottom portion of the switch and it sits in a switch nicely so once you drop your contact in there line it up with the hole make sure it's sitting right and make sure you do have the brass washer that's sitting under the delrin sit the magnet in there so it's facing the opposing end of the magnet so it'll 
have that resistance. Place your switch with the magnet in the tube and just start to thread it slowly. Once your threads have caught, all you're going to do is just tighten up your inner contact. The throw in a button is very, very difficult. It's very, very stiff, very strong and very stiff, okay? It requires a lot of pressure to actually hit this button. It is a lot of strength needing pushing this button because there's so much resistance between those magnets. They're repelling away from each other so, so strongly that it requires a lot of pushing to get that button in. Goon RDA, this is the olive drab, screw that in, and then screw in the tube. So it doesn't sit 100 thousandth percent tight and snug, but I can easily adjust that by backing out my RDA. And there we go. That can go no more, and I could tighten that up. My RDA sits nicely on there. So does this mod chuck? Yes, it does chuck. Um, I said in the beginning of this video, this is like an everyday carry and not so much a competition mod. I said this was a competition mod and this isn't. But this is considered a competition mod. It is brass with a copper uh, switch, copper contact, copper button, and then it has that brass washer in there as well. I'm not really sure why they decided to go with brass, but uh, I do know that this is a brass mechanical tube mod. Now, you know, f as far as conductivity goes, copper is going to reign supreme over brass, okay? But if you want the Boba Fett edition Bane, I believe the Boba Fett edition Bane only comes in brass. Now, I could be wrong about that, but I haven't seen a copper Boba Fett green. I've only seen brass, okay? I haven't seen any other metal, just brass. Now, there's also the Darth Vader Black Edition, or the Bader or Vader, or whatever they call it, and it's the Black Edition Cerakote. Now, that might be copper, or that might be brass. I don't know, okay? I haven't done 100% research on all the different types of styles and metals that they have. But I do know this. As far as fit, feel, and comfort, these tapered designs on the tube mod itself make it real easy to fire this device. Even though the button is mega, mega strong to push on, this is actually, with the, with the taperedness on there, it really gives you a good lock between your thumb and index finger in that area right there. So you can hold the mod and fire it with no problem. The mod doesn't slide out of your hands and it's not uncomfortable. It's very, very comfortable just to sit there and hold this mechanical tube mod. I really, really enjoy using this tube mod. Is it worth 300 bucks? Well, 300 bucks is pricey for the average vapor. For me, it's not because I invest money in these mechanical tube mods. At times, I'm fortunate enough for a company to send me something for free, but this was not given to me by H. Stone. This I'd gotten in a trade with uh, my friend uh, Sean Mills over at um, Charlotte Vapes in North Carolina. Now, Sean Mills, we had went back and forth as far as um, you know, doing business together, me working at a distribution center and him working at a vape shop. So me and Sean Mills, you know, we were talking every day and every now and then, and I told him I had this cotton candy able stackable mod, and he really liked it. And it's a limited edition, and it came with the limited edition cotton candy cap, because there's so many different cotton candy styles out there. And Sean really, really dug that mechanical tube mod and wanted it. So I told him, I said, you know what? I'll give you this setup if you send me the Bane, right? So I told him to go to Innovapes.net, so shop.innovapes.net. I told him to go there and talk to Cheryl and pick up this mod for me and have it sent to me, and I'll happily send him the mechanical tube mod extension. So I sent them the stackable AV mod, 
and in return he gave me uh he had this sent to my address basically and when i got in the mail i was like oh man this thing's awesome so i'm really really in love with this mechanical tube mod although i was in love with my aluminum cotton candy able stackable mod i loved 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 that mod but i have other stackable devices this is my screaming tree stackable okay it's a screaming tree mod up top it's the arbor screaming tree mod uh, which is aluminum, and then I have the aluminum AV stackable extension tube with an arbor sleeve on it. So to me, this is just a Screaming Tree stackable mod, which this to me is a great fucking mod. But uh, for the average person or the most person, if they're not interested in stackable mods and they just like single 18650 mods, then hey, that's your preference. But it took me trading a stackable mod to get this would have i have paid 300 bucks for this mod yes i would in all honesty i would spend 300 dollars on this mechanical tube mod simply because it's a great mechanical tube mod now uh if you want to get the copper or you want to get the brass just copper or just brass just the plain old copper or plain old brass i highly suggest it i am going to buy and purchase a copper bane just a plain old basic copper bane because i really really like the copper banes i was initially going to trade another mechanical tube mod with my friend phenom vapes but phenom is very hard to get a hold of sometimes and we could just never make the trade i really want to trade one of my mechanical tube mods for his copper mechanical tube mod but we never really hit that point really so it's probably not going to happen between me and Phenom, and I love Phenom Vapes. He's a great man and everything, but we're probably just never going to make that trade. Uh, but other than that, I'm going to most likely purchase a Copper Bane mod because I love it so much. Um, the brass is great, but I would love to see how the Copper hits, okay? I'm sure the Copper hits harder than this tube mod but i gotta honestly say i got a 0.08 ohm build on here currently and it doesn't get hot i don't get hot button it doesn't get it, it doesn't even get warm and it's it's pretty heavy it's got a nice thick beefiness to the brass although it's tapered down and everything it does have a bit of weight to it so i like the weight i like the very stiff throw in the button and it's a hybrid you know I, I'm partial sometimes. Sometimes I like silver-plated copper pins and so forth. But, you know, hybrid is cool too. You know, I like hybrids as well. Direct contact to your battery. And it vapes nicely. You know, I'm a little dry right now, but it vapes nicely. Let me grab a juice real quick. I'm vaping on uh, Smack's Memory of Mexico or Memories of Mexico. So good. So good, this e-liquid. I'm actually getting down to the bottom of it, so I'm, I'm a little little sad that I'm losing this juice because uh, it's emptying out, basically. But I really, really love the flavor of this liquid. It's delicious. And with my um, 528 Customs Goon, I got up top, I got the Chubby Cap, which I always thought of as the Summit Cap. But on here it says Chubby on the cap, and it's made by District 5. It's a really good cap that fits on the goon and it just the airflow and fit and feel for the mouth feels great it's a great mechanical tube mod out of italy good company good product good quality material like i said the only gripe i have is with the threads on here uh maybe when they were producing them maybe the tap and die that they were using or the carbide bit that was actually cutting the threads may have been may have been doing it a little too fast and it pulled the thread a little too harsh and uh you know peeled away some of the brass which gave it that rough feeling at the very very tips of the threading now my suggestion to bane uh i would do kind of like the um the ar mod the ar mod had just two or three big beefy threads i would do that beefy thread design on this center rather than having the fine threads some people say you know the finer threads give it a higher uh conductivity you know which I don't know what's true with that. I don't know if it's more conductive with beefier threads or if it's more conductive with the finer threads. I just believe 
less is more. You know, that's just me. So I would think the beefier, less least, less amount of threads is probably better than more threads. That's just my opinion, folks. Uh, uh, that's about it, really, you know. But as far as, you know, the threads on here, I was a little disappointed in the beginning when they seemed a bit choppy. But as you use it and you're opening and closing your mod over and over again, even if you put a little drop of 3M machine oil in there, it, it ends up smoothing out little by little and then it, you'll get there. It'll wear down a little bit to where it's not so rough anymore. But I just believe in clean threads. That's just me. Um... You know, it does put a slight disappointment for a $300 device having choppy threads. But would I still buy it if it has the choppy threads? Yes, I would because it is a performer and it does perform. And I really do really, really love this Mechanical 2 mod. You know, it's one of my favorite Mechanical 2 mods. If you ask me, is it the hardest hitting mod you have? Well, I mean, this mod right here is a hard fucking hitter. The Dragon Mod Co. has got a hard-hitting mod, okay? It's a fucking beast, okay? But it's also a big, heavy beast, for that matter, okay? Whereas this has got a lot of comfort in using this, you know, the tapered edges, the tapered parts of the tube, and I like the very stiff throw on the button. That's just how I like to vape. I like a very short hair trigger, or like a dead man switch, or a very stiff throw. I like that a lot. And that's that's just my opinion. Um, would you like this mod? Well, I, I would imagine anybody would like this mod. It's a great mechanical tube mod. Great design. Great um, realization. When they came to design this mod, they did a great job. Uh, on the tube canister itself, it does say... Designed and realized in Italy by H Stone Mods. Okay. Now, once again, like I said, this device was given to me through a trade of me trading my stackable mod for this. But would I buy this? Yes. Would I have spent $350 on this? No. I would spend the max, even with the shitty threads, I would have spent $320 max okay anything over 320 bucks they'd be like no for anything over 320 bucks i say those threads would have to be pristine okay that's just my opinion uh other than that 300 bucks still well worth it uh the lowest i could ever imagine this being priced at i would pay you know i could see it you know if they were to go if you would go from the lowest to the highest amount somebody would pay for this i would say anywhere from 350 to uh i'm sorry 250 to 325 okay that would be a price range that i would go to buy this okay if i seen it for 250 definitely buy it at 250 is it worth 250 yes absolutely worth 250 bucks but would the most be that i were ever to pay this so if somebody's in a mod group and they're trading it or whatever the case is 320 dollars maximum I wouldn't pay more than $320 for this device. So if somebody's in a trade group or they're selling this device and they're selling it for 500 bucks just because it's a limited edition, just note the threads are a little choppy. So, you know, they, they're smooth. They are smooth. But the very edges and the very tips of the threads are a little choppy. So I wouldn't spend more than $320 on this device. That's just my honest opinion. Uh, I'm sorry if anyone's selling this limited edition Bane for 500 bucks somewhere and they're pissed off right now. But it's the truth. Just because it's a limited edition and it's, and it's you know, one of 50 doesn't mean that the threads justify a high price tag. For me, the threads don't justify a high price tag. 320 bucks would be the maximum I would pay for this device. And that's it. I'm not an appraiser and I'm not some... I don't know, professional mech mod guy. I'm just somebody who loves mechanical tube mods. And this is a great mechanical tube mod. If you're interested in getting the Bane, note that it is limited edition and hard to come by. If you want the Darth Vader one, those are limited edition with a, you know, just a small batch that they came out with. But if you want, pick up the copper. If you see it in copper, spend the $228. That is more than worth the price, okay? More than worth the price. This one you're paying for the limited edition and you're paying for the Cerakoting, which we all know Cerakoting don't cost that much money, okay? So the fact that it's a limited edition, 
you know, whatever. You know, it just says it on the button. It's a limited edition. Anyway, that's it. That's all I got to tell you, people. So for me to YouTube, peace out. Like, comment, and subscribe. Hopefully this video was helpful. That's all I got to tell you. Peace!